Hey, traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, April 28, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. So today was Kabuki Theater. What is Kabuki Theater? It's the FOMC interest rate announcement. We call it Kabuki Theater because it's, generally speaking, a bunch of nonsense. Sometimes we get big moves following the Federal Reserve announcement. They have an announcement, they have a press conference, the whole nine yards. Sometimes, a lot of time, we get a big move. Whether it's up or down, it's a big move. Volatility comes into the market, it creates opportunity. What happened today? Well, you can tell from the daily chart, nothing happened today. A little bit of a spike during the press conference, a pullback, and they're basically in the same position they've been for the last couple of trading days. Let's put it in perspective. Now we're looking at a five minute chart. It looks like a rodeo. It looks like an EKG readout. The hourly chart, just eating time off the clock around the highs. The daily chart, in an uptrend like the others, eating time off the clock, not much happened the last three trading days. It's all a matter of how you view the tape. Depending on what chart you're looking at, you have a different perspective. Has anything materially changed or changed at all on the daily chart from yesterday and the day before? No, it hasn't. The trend is your friend until she throws your stuff out the top floor window. Treading water around the highs, they're building energy for another leg higher. However, at some point, the market will fail. Whether it fails from much higher prices from where we are now or it fails from where we are now, we don't know. However, what we do know is what the failure begins to look like. What does it begin to look like? How do you know that you're in the middle of a failure? Well, let's use an easy price. Let's use 412.79. Why that price? What is the importance or significance of that price? Well, let's pull over the chart and let's explain it. This is the last breakup candle, and that's the low, 412.79. Currently, that price coincides roughly with where the 20 period or home base is at present. We know that closing below there is not a positive development for the bull case. So we're using that as a nearby line in the sand. Doesn't mean the market's falling apart. It just means that the current melt-up operation would be put on hold. What happens if they pulled back a little bit and ran a test down in that neighborhood? Call it 413, 413.50, something of that variety. Would that be running a test or would that be a problem for the bulls? Well, until and unless they close below that number, 412.79, until they closed below there, then it's just running a test down near the lower portion of the most recent breakup candle. Why would that happen? because that's the way the market works. However, at present, what they're doing is creating a bullish flaggish kind of pattern. So the risk of a bull flag pattern is they come down toward the lower portion of the breakup candle. Then it's no longer a bull flag pattern, but that doesn't mean the bull case is off the table. You understand how this works? You wanna simplify the whole thing? The trend is your friend until she dumps you. As long as the market's above 412.79, she's in good shape. Now, since the Federal Reserve had their Kabuki Theater today, I happened to be viewing the television during the press conference. I wasn't listening, but I was viewing. So they're flashing stuff up on the screen. At one point, I see them discussing, or I see them flash up on the screen, that they're discussing the target inflation rate of 2%, And from what I can tell, they're not there yet, according to the Fed. Now, here's where I'm going on a soapbox a little bit, and I think a lot of you can relate to this. I don't think individually we really give a hoot what the Fed thinks inflation is. I don't know what they think inflation is, but here's the way as individuals we look at inflation. We're individuals, we're families. Inflation costs us money. So here's what we do. We say, is stuff this year costing more than it did last year? Is stuff this month costing more than it did last month? And so on. That's it. We strip away all the nonsense. 
I don't give a shit what the Fed's formula is for inflation. I don't care what they leave out, what they want to include. Inflation only matters to you and me based on what you buy or what I buy as an individual or a family. Anything other than that, we really don't care. Obviously, inflation goes a lot deeper than I just said. I'm just simplifying it for the purpose of this conversation. But when you're talking about the cost of commodities rising and the cost of commodities going into as components, ingredients, inventory, parts of other things that are made that we buy, it causes the cost of everything to rise. So I guess it bothers me a little bit when I hear the Fed discussing, hey, they're not really yet at their target inflation rate of 2%. Well, guess what? You're paying more, I'm paying more, everybody else is paying more than 2% in additional cost of goods that we purchase. More than 2% than we were paying last year. I understand the whole game of charades and interest rates and inflation and the Fed and employment and pull this string and let that lever go. And I understand all that stuff. But don't discuss stuff that doesn't make sense to the average person. Soapbox concluded. How about the 240 chart? Do we learn anything different on the 240 chart? No, it's a stretched out daily chart. And guess what? There's your low again, 412.79. And there's your bullish flaggish pattern. Until and unless it fails, the duck is another leg higher. Hard to believe one of them will fail, but until they fail, they haven't failed. What went on inside the numbers today on a Fed day slash Kabuki theater day? What are we talking about? What kind of thoughts are in our heads? Well, that's important that we go through it. Why? Because it's lessons that don't necessarily always have to directly relate to a number that are also valuable and stuff that we take on into the future. Things that we learn each and every day compound each other. Today is one of those days inside the numbers where I think if you pay attention and write a few things down, you're going to learn some things that you would not necessarily otherwise hear or read on a regular basis. It's inside my head. It's just my way of looking at things. We'll circle back to Stocks on the Move. We'll take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's hump day. No surprise to wake up flat. Why? Because we're waiting on the Fed. Let's see what happens in the early thoughts. It's all about Kabuki Theater. We know all that. Here's the setup. This is what's going on in my mind as we approach what's going to happen in the early going. We're likely to see a morning rush. All things are relative. Given Trick and Company an opportunity to run a quick shakeout operation. Just like yesterday and the day before, they'll go into sleep mode slash float mode for a while. Today, however, they should wake up around mid-afternoon when the FOMC will do their thing, a la Kabuki Theater. They'll spike higher, they'll drop them lower, and whip around for a few minutes, not necessarily in that order. If you think about what happened, and think about the fact that this was put up on the board at whatever time, zero dark 30 at some point, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, something like that. Now here's a little tidbit. We like to run this as a business, so I put of note. Being in a trade, guessing which way she'll go after the Fed is not part of how we treat this as a business. It's a coin flip. I do realize there are some traders that feel the need to always be in a trade and specifically during the announcement, as long as they realize that's a bet, not a trade. Let's move along, see what else we have. Remember, the market didn't really move over the last couple of sessions. The same SPY 417 is important. Running a test is one thing, but closing candles below is another. The picture's worth a thousand words. Right of the vertical is today's activity, five minute SPY chart. 417 is the horizontal line running across the bottom. 417 was important yet again. On the board, bright and early. As we move along, you see nice rip on save and pins. We'll get back to stocks on the move later. Market was immediately going to sleep. Good thing for earnings season and stocks on the move. The SPY is just floating as suspected. There's no surprise there. So we move along a little bit. 1021, from a very short-term perspective, 418 down to 417.75 is support. Back to a picture's worth a thousand words, let's understand where we are. 
That was about 10.20 in the morning. And here you see a low of 4.17.74 at 10.40 in the morning. Funny how that works. 4.18 down to 4.17.75 is support. Now we also know first time, best time, next time down later in the day, it's not the same. It's a one-shot, one-trick pony deal. We're moving along. After the first hour of trading, here's what we've got. Stocks on the move, they were active today. The spider, not doing anything. We knew that was going to happen. They're waiting on the Fed. It's likely they're just going to stay in a chop shop formation back and forth between that point in which the post was made and the announcement that comes around 2 p.m. So we're moving along. Still nothing going on. We're moving along. They can never really get going because they were just floating around. 127, just checking in. So this is kind of the pre-Kabuki thought process. As suspected, they're still waiting and did nothing other than the chop shop formation stuff. We knew that was going to happen. After the announcement, the market will go back and forth. It may go back and forth several times, which is, and there's an extra word in there, I obviously was editing and didn't do a good job, whipping around. Remember, if they push them up north, the big fat round numbers of ES4200 and SPY420 are still sitting ducks. On a super spike, they don't have to stop there. We don't know what's going to happen after the Fed. Again, just kind of the preparation thought process. If they drop them and start to head south, there are numbers, but we need to be spectators for a while before gaining an understanding. So we're preparing. We don't know which way it's going to go but we know that they could go fast in either direction. We're not interested in getting caught with our pants down while being issued a pie in the face as a result of impatience, a guess, and having to be in a trade. This is the alter ego stuff. Remember, I'm a trader. I've been doing this a long time. I've had all the emotions that you have. I still get the same emotions. How you manage them is what sets apart one from another from another. Let's see what else we have. We're moving along. So we have a chart. Just a reminder, a picture's worth a thousand words, keeping it simple and eliminating all the noise off the chart. What are they doing? They're building energy in a bullish flaggish formation. Again, we just want to reiterate what's going on. We always want to have a sense for the big picture, a sense for the intermediate picture, a sense for the short-term picture. So here we go. Remember this from before. How do you know it's not going to happen, meaning the breakout, meaning the bullish flaggish formation sending price higher? How do you know it's not going to happen? Well, it's the same thing we talked about before. I'm telling inside the numbers members during the day. Why? Because if in fact price was down there, they're going to want to know about it. We're moving along. A just in caser, another spot in between the breakup candle low and where price was at that time, 4.1475. Didn't need it, but thought I would post it on the board just for informational purposes. Then they go into the press conference, so they're just floating back and forth, chop shop formation. You know what happened in the rest of the day? Any of the notes that we didn't go over here, you can certainly circle back pause the video and read all the notes and double check the work back on the charts. Here's a snapshot from Stocks on the Move today. Pretty healthy list. It's a bonanza. It's earnings season. We're going to get a lot of opportunity. We've talked about that ahead of time. We're going to take a look at all the charts. Why? Because they all hit their price objectives. The first one you saw on the board was Texan, Texas Instruments. It opened below the number, unfortunately. Nice rip from the lows, but the opening print was 181.90, so it was off the board, and they did not reach the second number. We see this all the time. It just is what it is. If traders make a choice to go in the trade, when that happens, that's their choice. It's not my trade. How about Mickey Soft? Check this one out. Sometimes you just have to laugh at this stuff. So Mickey Soft, after earnings, was getting a haircut at the opening bell. 253.10 was on the board. I had 253.10 last night. I knew 253.10 was important. And what happened in the 955 candle, ending 955, the low was 253.10.
They start to trade up, but they have to, of course, come back to run a better test of 253.10, and then they finally started trading away, telling us that, in fact, 253.10 was important. Now, regardless of what did or did not work out from a trading or scalp trading or day trading perspective, that's not the point here. What the point here is, for the purposes of this part of the conversation, is that A, the numbers work, and B, you have to ask yourself a question, why that number? How do you know that number? They're headed to a destination. It's a systematic approach. The destination is gonna be right the majority of the time. Not every time, of course, but the majority of the time. If it's right the majority of the time, you have a different confidence level going into a trade. The confidence level is it needs some time. You have to give these things some time to work out. Sometimes they have a hit and run. They hit the number and they take off in the other direction. Kind of happened here with Microsoft. They didn't go all the way back in the other direction, but they hit the number and took off. That immediately tells you that number's important. There's no two ways about it. Sometimes they're hanging around the number, hanging around the number, and that tells us one of two things. Either there's another destination, they're just not ready to get going to that secondary destination yet, or they're just not ready to get back up and head back in the other direction yet. Some Weisenheimer is going to say, well, wait a minute, there's a third choice, which is they blow right through. No, that's not the third choice, because if that happens, then I had the destination wrong. Fastly. Again, open below the number, the opening print 6668. They had a great rip. Look at the high of 6855, but it's a no trade because they opened below the first number and they didn't get to the second number. So this one is another no trade similar to Texan. Amgen, technically speaking, painting by the numbers, half the position at the first number or a third of the position, there were three numbers on the board a third at the second number, and it worked its way back to where? The first number, you think it was important? Yeah, how do we know that? Because what was one support will become resistance. Even though it wasn't support first thing in the morning, the second number was more supportive of price, but it was resistance in the afternoon, reconfirming that the number was in fact important. Again, you have to ask yourself, look where it closed yesterday, all the way up at 255. How do you know this thing's going to stop short around 236, 237, 238 in that neighborhood? Knowing the destination. Technically speaking, you really didn't get the base hit. They never gave you the full requirement to call it a base hit, but it's a no harm, no foul. We'll move on. We like these. Save. 35.38, this one was getting a buzz cut at the open. They came into the number, spiked it by a few pennies, immediately had a nice rocket ride. And you can see here, within a few minutes, $36 and change. Traders that are in a trade like that first thing in the morning have to be, must be booking profit along the way. If it continues on and gives you a further rocket ride, that's great. You have a piece of the position left over but you have to be treating this as a business. You never know which ones are gonna go on the all-day suckers, the all-day rocket rides. They don't happen every day, but you wanna have a piece of the action when they do. How about pins? Getting a nice buzz cut at the open. This one got crushed today. 67.18 on the board bright and early. The low was 67 even. They're at 69, I believe 67 on high just minutes later. That's a nice rip. Traders are booking profit. That's a nice trade. Destination. The destinations are going to be right the majority of the time. By the way, one of the reasons why most of these stocks just went to sleep is the entire market went to sleep, quote unquote, waiting on the Fed. ENPH, another dud. It was in the no harm, no foul camp. VNE. We're going to call this one a shit burger. They came into the first number and they hung out for a cup of coffee. They did so for so long that they ate too much time off the clock to consider the second price a bona fide trade and they never came back. I have no choice but to call this one a shit burger. Now, it's not a big trade. It's not a big loss. We're talking pennies here, but it still has to be in the category of they don't all work. 
some wind up to be shitburgers. You can still see how the second number was important. Once they got below, it did what? It became resistance. What about Camp IWM? Did anything happen today? Post-Fed, post-Kabuki Theater, nothing happened. They're beginning to eat some time off the clock. They're not at new highs, but they're above moving averages. So we're going to call the trend your friend until something different takes place. We're going to call this one 122.50, 122. In that camp, start getting daily closes down in that neighborhood and something other than the bull case has developed. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Nothing doing. We're not going to make a federal case out of down 25 points on a $15,000 index. They're at new highs. The trend is your friend. We're not going to make anything more out of down 25 points. There's certainly no material change on this chart. Speaking of material changes on a chart, is there one on the Q's chart, the folks out in Silicon Valley? And the answer is no. It was down a little bit from yesterday's close, now up after the earnings announcement from Facebook and Apple. Trend is the dominant thing, no change. Carbon copy, the trend is the dominant thing, no change. There's nothing we can derive. There's no change on the XLF chart. We're moving along. We're going to assign the title of current canary in the coal mine possibility for Smash Mouth. Why is that? Something's going on with the semiconductor space. The semis are generally a pretty good proxy for the tech space. And you can see what's going on here. We've got a lot of stuff at highs, in uptrends, we have a lot of things that are positive in a lot of markets for the bull case. Here, we're not able to make new highs, and they've now begun to make another lower high and get below the 20 period moving average or home base. This warrants paying attention to. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. From a weekly chart perspective, and keep in mind, we have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. From a weekly chart perspective, this could be simply just recocking the gun one more time. Doesn't it look similar to the weekly chart of the Qs, just not on the same time schedule? It looks very similar, just not identical. Puzzle piece on the table. You have to always look at both sides of the tape, the bull case and the bear case. Be objective, be honest with yourself. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.